Hey guys, it's Tommy from Galpin Autosports and I'm sure you guys have seen and heard of the Raptor S. take some time and explain a little bit more about the truck to you guys we're getting a lot of calls and a lot of emails in and I want to be able to show you guys around the truck and have you guys see all the little delicate intricacies and all the details that we uh, took time to make right so let's go check it out so on the first walk up to it you can definitely see that the fenders are much much wider so this kit that we put on extends each side by six inches so the truck is total a foot wider than what it would be now these fenders originally were meant for just race teams people who do Baja style racing put these on for one event they get damaged they get thrown away and there's no biggie on this truck we wanted to make sure that they look good and they wanted to make sure that they present well so we took time and pretty much rebuilt them from the ground up we used them as a template but we went ahead and did all the body work make sure that all the lines were correct and did the finish work on it so it can truly be something impressive when you approach it when you're looking at the car from different angles so you're not seeing any waviness and you're not seeing any blotchiness how you would on a fiberglass body so what happened here on with this kit is pieces like up here where it meets the a pillar were off and a little bit too high on one side too low on the other and then when you come up to the front the body line here and then the joining where it meets the actual headlight and the other trim bezels around the vehicle were different so Jordan took the time to go ahead and sand parts down cut parts out re fiberglass it lower or higher as he needed to because when you look at a car you want to make sure the lines are straight and we want to make sure that the gaps are even so Jordan had to take the extra care and extra time to make sure all that stuff fell into line and looks how it does now as easy as people think that it is to get this it's very difficult and it takes a lot of time and effort to get it to look this good so now moving to the back fender again a lot of these race trucks just have a fuel filler neck in the bed or off to the side down here now we knew that I hundred didn't want to use this as a race truck and he wanted to have the conveniences of a regular vehicle so what Jordan did is he was able to make a mold of the factory fuel cap on a Raptor and then he French it into this fender so very convenient just like how the factory Raptor would have been it doesn't seem like much but I think it's a creature comfort that we take for granted because it'd be very awkward filling the fuel from down here or jumping into the bed every time so I think that I hundred definitely appreciates it and any, anyone else would if they're gonna use this truck as a daily driver moving on to the chase rack so the chase rack has a couple added benefits the main one on this one it's hydraulic powered so what that means is instead of having the lights constantly sticking up giving you more wind noise giving you less high clearance if you're going into smaller spaces and garages this unit folds back in so right now it's in its recessed position when you flip the switch it will actuate up and it will go to a predetermined position where we've set it so that way when you're using it it's on it's giving you all the light you need but when you're not it's tucked away it's not going to get damaged with anything and it gives you a sleeker look to the truck and something else we did custom work here was Alejandro liked the honeycombing that the Raptor uses on its factory cue so the factory grill has this honeycombing so what we did is we took this shape we accentuated it around on all the bumper pieces front rear and side so we gave it a clean look and now it ties into all the other pieces that are on the vehicle speaking of the bumper when we got the bumper it was off the shelf for one of our companies that we work with it was too narrow we needed to make it wider so what Eric did is he went ahead and made a jig for it, a template and he extended the bumper out to meet the edge of the fenders by doing so we made sure that the bumper falls the body lines and looks proper with the vehicle in addition you see the openings we have Baja designs lights so we have a 40 inch bar up front in the middle and then we have the smaller bars on the side in amber giving you light right below the vehicle again if you're off-roading you want to make sure you have light on the ground right below and then the front one is giving you light all the way down the trail another thing we did on the front end was the custom headlights we got with the guys at the retrofit source and we got a set of these morimoto headlights that the retrofit source redid they look fantastic even rolling down the street the light output is amazing and when you're looking at the truck from the outside it looks badass and looks mean coming towards you so you have a led setup where you have four led projectors shining light onto the street and then you have the led ring right around we have it set up in a cool white or a light blue color moving on into it we wanted to do a custom grill in the custom grill center of it the centerpiece was going to be the swipe logo now if you just have the logo at nighttime you're not even going to see it so we thought why not backlight it so we went ahead and did the backing of it wired it in and now when you turn on the vehicle's light the backlight on the swipe logo will go on and you can see it more pronounced so if you take a look at down underneath this bottom grill we've installed the intercooler so with these vehicles that are turbocharged or uh, supercharged 
primarily in this turbocharger's case, you want to be able to cool the charge temperatures that are coming into the vehicle. So the intercooler will allow the outside ambient air that's getting sucked in to be cooled and then given into the engine. Colder air is going to be resulting into more dense air, which is more oxygen uh, packed air. It's going to give you more power. So we made sure to upgrade the intercooler. We have a tune in it as well. We have the SPD turbo adapters as well are installed on there along with the Corsa exhaust. So that coupled with the intercooler, the intake, SPD turbo adapters, the exhaust gives you an all around noticeable power gain everywhere from down low all the way up to highway speeds where the truck really comes to life. So when you add up all the additions, you're looking at right around 540 horsepower and about 650 pounds feet of torque. How do you make a Raptor perform better? There's not very many ways you could do that, but some of the companies that we deal with as far as suspension have nailed it. One of them in particular is Icon. Icon, we got together with them and we told them what project we're doing and they had just a kit for us. We did a front coilover setup, a three inch front coilover setup with rear three inch uh, shock with a bypass. We went ahead and they uh, are also gonna throw in their upper control arm kit with it as well. Once that's on, this Raptor is gonna perform much better on road and off road and it's gonna be an all around better ride for the consumer. So you're enjoying your plush ride on road and when you wanna go off road, you get tighten up and click uh, the firmness on the shock a little bit higher and enjoy your off road experience as well. So one of the things that you notice on, on the truck when you're approaching it is the V-lock ring. It's so aggressive and you see the black loose behind it. I think it looks phenomenal. What we did is when we were talking to Alejandro about the truck, he went back and forth, saw some styles, but nothing really jumped out at him and he couldn't really say that he liked anything in particular. So I called my buddies over at 1221 wheels and we got together with them and we designed a custom wheel for Alejandro for this truck. As you can see, we have the uh, textured black finish behind. We have the ring and the barrel inside done in gloss brush red. And then we've also done the custom swipe logo up on the center cap. We went ahead and wrapped the wheels in a Cooper Discovery SCT Pro tire. It's a 38 by 13.5 by 20. It's a huge tire. I know these fender wheels don't do it justice, but it's a big tire and it's able to give you great performance on and off road. And behind the wheel and tire that you're looking at, you're gonna see some Alcon brakes. So we got together with our buddies at Alcon. They have an awesome setup for these Raptors. The Raptor brakes do a very good job on their own, but what happens is under extreme braking and constant braking, if you're off-roading high speed or doing whatever these trucks are meant to do, you'll experience brake fade. And these Alcon brakes can limit that. They're able to reduce brake fade while giving you that awesome firm pedal feel and also reducing braking distance. So another request was to have no branding or logoing on the tailgate. Now that seems a little bit easier said than done because the branding and logoing is stamped into these tailgates. So we went ahead and got a new tailgate that did not have the stamping and branding. And then we got a new applique as well that didn't have anything on it either to give you one clean, seamless look. And a special thing that Eric did is once we came up with the name Raptor S, we wanted to make sure we have a logo for it. So Eric went ahead and on the computer, he designed the, the font and went ahead and cut it out and even did the red in a different color to make it stand out. Below that, you can see that we have the inserts and the honeycombing all around on the back bumper too to tie it in as well. So obviously we did a bunch of upgrades to the exterior of the vehicle, but where the real magic happened was the interior. Come check it out. One of the custom touches that Alejandro wanted was again his logoing almost everywhere that we could get it. So one of the things was the puddle lights. We went ahead and got regular puddle lights and then we customized them to have the swipe branding and the swipe badge on it. As you take a look at the door panel, we've gone ahead and rewrapped the door panel in all Italian leather. And then on the inserts, we've gone ahead and used suede. We've gone ahead and blacked out all the accents to piano black and the chrome pieces that used to be probably like a smoked chrome, we've gone ahead and dipped and made actual chrome to make it stand out and pop more. All the way to the uh, switches, we've also chromed the edge of the switches to mimic the Rolls Royce feel. And then moving on to the speaker plate, we've gone ahead and machined out a speaker plate and then done the chrome bezel around it as well. Once the door is open, you can't help but just to look at the cake panel we have made. Eric, again, started from scratch and he built this from nothing. He went ahead and again, took the same Raptor S script, put it with plexiglass and then made the covering around it where you see the black covering around it and then covered that in stainless steel plate. He backlit it. So now every time the vehicle's door opens, the lights go on and also the Raptor S luminates, giving you a truly one of a kind finish look and feel. So one thing that you might not know is Ford Raptors do not come with massaging seats. Some of the other trucks do and other vehicles in the lineup do, but the Raptor does not. And Alejandro wanted massaging seats. So what we did is we ordered some parts, not at some, but we ordered almost a truck full of parts because they don't sell these things as one unit. Ford doesn't give you one part number for a seat. They give you hundreds. So once we got everything in, Eric sat there like a mad scientist and looked at all the instructions and put piece together these massaging seats. We went ahead and had to figure out how they're going to communicate with the vehicle because the vehicle was never meant to communicate with them in the first
first place. Once Eric got all that stuff to work, we figured out the foam and uh, made custom foam to make sure it's more contoured and more fitting and uh, supportive. After that, we wrapped the entire thing in Italian leather again. We did suede also for the inserts. We did diamond stitching on the centers portions and perforations on the centers as well so your cooled seats can come through and the heated seat feature comes through as well. The next thing in the interior that catches your attention is the dash. What we had to do with the dash is we completely disassembled everything, went down to the bare plastic pieces. So we went ahead and sanded off all the texture, smoothed them out, and then we painted it gloss black. After we painted the base gloss black, we took all the uh, pad surfaces and everything that was soft and we wrapped it in, again, Italian leather. So we went with white leather and you see the black accents and the white work very well together. Once we got all that put back together, we were looking at the dash and the paddle shifters and we thought we need to do a little bit extra there. So what we did is we matched the paddle shifters with the rings inside the dash to the red accents around the vehicle. So all those have been painted candy apple red as well. So they're small touches, but when you're sitting in the vehicle, you can definitely notice them and you can see how they tie in with everything else. A lot of you guys have asked, why do we keep this airbag? Why don't we redo it and use a custom one instead of reusing the existing one? The reason being is this being a road going vehicle and this coming with this particular airbag, it would be against the law for us to change it out. And technically, if anything, God forbid were to happen, we'd be liable for it. So we want to make sure that we're keeping the safety equipment intact on the vehicle. And if we're doing any modifications, it's to something that will not cause any harm to the occupants of the vehicle. So by only minimally modding the airbag, we can make sure that it will operate how it's supposed to operate and not have any issues or failures when it comes time when it needs to work. And that way we're just lightly modifying it by doing the customer's provided logo on the airbag and not touching anything else on it. So another thing that catches your eye when you look at the interior is the huge tablet that we have in the dash. We teamed up with our guys over at Linkswell and they provided us with the screen. And the screen had certain characteristics that it already took care of, which meaning it took care of the climate control, it took care of the radio and a few other things. But Eric wanted to take it a step further. We hated the fact that most cars when you build, you'll have extra remotes for this and that functionality. Everything just seems like it was put together. But we wanted to make everything clean and streamlined. So Eric programmed everything to be working out of this central command unit. All the functionality of the seats, the heating, the cooling, the massaging features is all controlled through that screen. When you look at the Starlight headliner, everything in the Starlight headliner is controlled through this screen. You could change the color of it, you could turn it on and off. Those are the awesome features that Eric was able to program into the Linkswell system and now you're able to have one command post you don't have to dig for remotes everything's easily accessible right through here another thing that I can't show you guys right now and I can't explain to you unless you're here is the audio the audio is truly amazing and a couple steps that we've done like sound deadening the interior have taken it to the next level when you're sitting inside here and, and one of the movies is played it truly feels like you're inside a cinema we've gone ahead and sound deadened the floor the roof, the doors, everything. Even when you close the car, you hear that thump where you just know that it's almost airtight sealed and it gives you that isolation from the road noise. Everything inside the cabin is just whisper quiet and you're able to listen to whatever audio or whatever movies that you're watching. Jordan took a lot of time to spec out the right audio for this truck, which meant we went with a set of Focal components up front, Focal speakers in the rear. We have a sound processor, we have an amplified system, and we have a custom box that Jordan made below. So when you take a look at these trucks, they have some room below the seats. We wanted to utilize it for our audio purposes. What Jordan did is he made a custom box. Most boxes have four corners and they're very easy to make. What's tough to make is a box that has a contoured edge or a rounded edge. In this case, we didn't want that corner intruding into the cabin space and the passenger space. So Jordan custom made a box that's been radiused out that will give you extra leg room getting in and out of the vehicle while not sacrificing any sound or music quality. Another thing that you notice when you look at a high-end vehicle is the floor mats. We definitely had to go big on these. So we got some lamb's wool floor mats and these things are so thick that they're actually giving you another added layer of sound deadening to it and I honestly feel bad putting my feet on here I kind of want to go you know barefoot on these things because they feel so good so this is beautiful it's truly something that when people see they're taken aback by it when we sat down and we looked at the Rolls Royce this was one of the key features that we knew we had to duplicate on this truck and what we did is we went back and forth and had a few ideas but the major issue was Alejandro had glass panel piece here so he had a twin panel moonroof that was a huge issue what we had to do is figure out a way around that. So we threw out some options, but we thought the best way would have been to just get rid of his existing roof and order a brand new piece from Ford that would came on a truck without a moonroof. We went ahead and did that, replaced that unit. We got the new headliner for a unit without a moonroof. We went ahead and wrapped that headliner in perforated leather in order to hide the holes that we have to make for the uh, fiber optics that are run through it. Eric, Jordan, and the rest of the team here sat down and painstakingly threaded over 1,200 strands of fiber optics 
through these holes, back out the other end, ran them all the way down through to the back side of the cab where they're gonna link up into a light box. And the light box, the fiber optic will run light from one source all the way to the end of that fiber optic line. It could be five feet, it could be 30 feet. It doesn't matter the distance. So we have a light box in the back corner of the truck and it has different light modes to give you different color outputs. And that runs and powers all of these lights simultaneously and you're able to change the colors on the go as you wish. Certain features like this are important for us to do in-house because we wanna be able to do it the right way and do it to the customer specifications. There's a lot of times kits available online that you could buy, but the quality won't be the same, the finished outcome won't be the same, and overall, we wouldn't wanna put our name on something that someone else did. Being in this industry, I enjoy hearing one thing from my customer. Is their amusement and their awe at how much work it truly took to build a truck like this or a car that they want or a project that they're looking to do. When we sit down and you can see all the work that was done to this vehicle, how far it had to be broken down, we took this car down to the bare frame. We took the glass out, the doors came off, the interior came apart, even specific pieces of the interior like the dash came out to its skeleton and then they were rebuilt back up from there. It's the right way to do something and it's the best way to make sure that the work that you have done is gonna last and it's gonna look its best for all time. So this build was a dream for Alejandro and it turned out being something that we cared a lot about and we put a lot of our blood, sweat and tears into. We're kind of sad to see this one go but we're excited to look into the future. We have 24 more of these to do and all the other fun projects that you guys are gonna bring in for us. So as always, if you guys could dream it, we could build it.